Okay, welcome to the F1 in Schools competition. The object of the competition is to race a car, such as the ones that you see over here, down a 20 metre track in as fast as possible a time. Now the cars run on a, have a tether line that's run through these tiny little guides that you can see over here on either side. The tether line runs all the way down the track and that stops the cars from taking off. <coughs> Excuse me, they can reach speeds of up to 80 kilometres an hour down the end of the track. These cars are a few years old, so some of the shapes and rules that govern the shapes have changed slightly over time. I'll talk to them later, but the basic principles are the car has to have four wheels. Um, this car on my left here, or your left, is a development class car, which means that it has to use the standard wheels supplied by the REA, the organisation that runs the F1 in schools, and they're those plastic wheels that you can see there. Now they come on a, um, on a little assembly like this, and you can see here that they're plastic moulded. Supplied also are these um, grommets, or core grommets. They're basically um, plastic bearings. And those bearings have a six millimetre outer diameter, and they're designed to fit inside a hole that you'll make for the axles and the brass hole that you'll make for the axles inside your, your balsa wood block. And they have to have a standard, um, well, they don't actually, they can, you can have any kind of axle that you want. Um, this car has a bamboo axle, but the REA does supply the kit with a standard brass axle, which looks something like that. They're quite heavy, but that's the standard sort of setup. So you have to use their wheels, you can't modify them in any way, and tether line guide also you can see supplied here. And you have to use brass axles for development class. In addition to the development class, you can alter or modify the front airfoil of the car. So you can 3D print a plastic part like this one and stick it on, but you cannot modify the rear airfoil. That must be made out of the one balsa wood block Hence, you can see the design of the rear wings of this car, still part of the balsa wood block. Okay, so how does that happen out of a balsa wood block? Um, well, it starts off with this standard balsa wood block, which I'll show you here. There it is. And it measures 223 millimetres long, and I think it's um, 50 by 64 or 65 millimetres wide in cross section. It has a hole here to accommodate the gas canister, and the tether line guide uh, channel is already machined or milled into the block. Now very important to realise when you design your car, very very important, your car can be no longer than 210 millimetres in length. Why is that? Because when we machine the car you have to leave at least 10 millimetres or 13 millimetres of space at the end so that the machine, the milling machine can grip the block at the end that doesn't have the hole. The other end of the hole, a metal spigot fits in here and holds the block in position, but this end has to be a gripping mechanism and therefore you can't use the whole 223 millimetres of length. So maximum 210 millimetres length of your car. Next thing to realise is that the dimensions from the centre of this centre axis of this hole that's created for the gas canister to the bottom edge of the block where my finger's pointing here, so the centre of the hole to the bottom edge, must be 29 millimetres. It cannot be any higher or any less than that. So when you do your CAD designs in Autodesk or Creo, make sure that your block from the centre of the axis that runs all the way through, from the central axis of this, um, this gas canister hole to the bottom of your block must be 29 millimetres. Okay, and uh, that's the standard size block. So you can see that the car will be machined out of a block like this, and this is a car that's been partially machined, and the Axle holes have been drilled already at 6 millimetres in diameter, and that's ready to go. Alright, um, once your car's machined like this, and this will be a development class, sorry, a cadet class car, the cadet class, which is the class before the development class, has to have a completely balsa wood made body. No changing of the front or rear airfoils, and you must use the supplied parts of the REA, those standard plastic parts. So that's cadet class. The next class up is the development class where you, you can, you still have to use the same the wheels and the grommets but you can modify the axle, or use a different axle, and you can modify the front wing within certain restrictions. The final class, which is professional class, um, requires a car that can have a um, modified rear airfoil and a modified front airfoil. Now in this particular case, this is quite an old car, so um, you can see that they're still made of balsa wood front and rear airfoil. But uh, that's possible to change the design considerably now and use a, a 3D printed part as a rear airfoil 
do the same as the front or some other material if you choose. And you can also have your own wheels, manufacture your own wheels and axles. And that's what these people have done here, created different sorts of axles and wheels. And often they're 3D printed or machined out of a, some sort of a polymer. You can see the tether line guide still in place there, they need to be there. Now the minimum length of your car, that your car can be, is 170 millimetres, but the maximum is 210. That's just some important part to remember. Basic introduction. Now the other thing is that when the car is machined, it's going to be machined. Uh, you're restricted in cadet class. The machining point, so if you can pretend my finger is a milling cutter, the milling cutter can only mill from one side, then the car is turned over and milled from the other side. Like that. So any shapes that have a hollow internally here cannot be milled in, in uh, cadet class. Only from one side and then the other side. On development class, it's the same. Um, now, development class, it can be machined from either the top and the bottom, or from side to side. So very similar. So you'll notice this car over here, which is a development class car, uh, has been machined from the side. It could have been machined from the top and the bottom, but these people decide to go from side to side. On the other hand, the professional class teams can have their cars machined from the top and the side and the bottom, all four sides if they choose, or even more. There's no limit on how many sides you can machine a professional class car. If you're a first timer in the F1 in schools, you can go into cadet class or any of the other classes that you choose. But once you've been in the competition a first time and you're going in a second time, you'll have to move on to a, um, a professional class team. Development class team is also for first timers as well. And uh, you can go into development class too if you want to do that. Okay, so um, that's a little bit basics about the sorts of cars that you can have, the kind of classes that you can be in, and the kind of manufacturing designs that you're going to have to consider when you make your car um, to factor in machining spots, depending on the class of car that you're going to be competing in. Alright, good luck, and I look forward to seeing you on the track.